Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. Hi guys again. So today this video is about this brush lens that I have for the past few years. Uh, I will take you through the lens properties. I will take a shot with it using paper negative. I process the paper negative and then show you the final result at the end of the video. So come along with me. So today we are going to talk about brush lens and in this case this is also a barrel lens because there is no shutter control or aperture control built into the lens itself. I hope you can see but this is Bosch and Lom barrel lens it is 10 inch in focal length so about 254mm and the biggest f-stop is f5 and this is of the pressure design. You can see that I have removed the rear lens element, um, but somehow the front element is stuck. This is the lens hood, which I can remove, but the front element is stuck there. So I have not uh, tried to use other means to open it. And you can see that there used to be an aperture control here, but I think it has been uh, damaged and is remove so there's no aperture control here for the lens element back lens element which i can remove i can further remove it and uh, examine the the lens element within it there should be two portion here if you look at the Pepsier design but i will not further uh, attempt to open it so we can assembling it it back, assemble it back. Okay. Including the hood. It is nice that uh, when I bought this uh, lens, it actually came with the mounting ring. Which is not always the case when you buy old lenses because a lot of these things get lost easily. So with a mounting ring, you can actually mount it to your lens board by using a few screw and then your brass lens can actually be screwed onto the mounting ring so it's a lot easier this does not have a mounting ring that's not the end of the world there are other ways to mount your lens the most common one will be just to drill a hole on your lens board the, di the diameter of the hole should be the same as the diameter of the lens and then you just sort of force the lens through the hole usually the the contact or the friction will just hold the lens there nicely so you can see that this is a barrel lens there is no aperture control or shutter speed there so how do we control it for our shooting right uh, usually we we'll use a very slow shooting media like photo paper as a photo negative the ISO is about uh, 3 or 6 so you can use a lens cap okay this is one that I make myself you can use it to control the exposure for example you need to expose it for like one second you can just open up the lens cap 1000 and put it back Okay. For paper negative, we don't really need to be precisely accurate. I have something else that I can use to control the exposure for the brush lens. This is a modified focal plane shutter taken from a baby uh, graphics camera. That means it's not full 4x5, slightly smaller than 4x5. A friend has uh, kindly gifted this to me. So I have built some so-called uh, adapter to mount this side to the 810 camera where the lens will usually sit and then in the front of this modified adapter my lens will sit here right okay so if you have not used a graphics camera before with a focal plane shutter 
Just let me quickly show you. Uh, there's two control here. One will control the letter and one control the number. And if you look at the small table here, different number and letter will give you different shutter speed. For example, if I were to look at A and the number 6, the shutter speed will be 1 over 40. Right? Whereas if the letter B and the number 6, the shutter speed will be 150 so on and so forth. I try to paste a picture of this uh, table as a bigger image on the video. So there is a letter here. Now it's T. So let me change it to A. And then the number, I can change it to... Uh, so now it's a 3. Right? So observe carefully the shutter. Right, this is like a shutter shutter curtain. So when I trip the shutter while pressing this lever, you will find that it actually open for a certain number of uh, second. So if you are looking at A and number three, A three is supposed to be one over twenty of a second. Right. I haven't really tested whether how accurate this is. For this shutter, it's actually taken from a uh, baby graphics. So the opening is actually quite small. And if I do use it with this lens, it actually cause some vignetting problems. I have to push the lens barrel further in to minimize the vignetting. I would guess that if I had to use a 4-5 graphics uh, focal plane shutter, that will not be an issue. In fact, on YouTube, there is a fellow photographer who shared how he made this um, focal plane shutter. That's where I have this idea from. And uh, I will find the link and link it in the video description. So today for testing the blast lens, I will use um, this Uford fiber-based paper. It's expired and uh, this is what I have now so i will just use this and this is my 810 holder so for the 810 holder the 8 by 10 film is always slightly smaller than 8 by 10 inches so this is what i trim off this is what i trim off from the long side and i trim this off from the short side so maybe i just trim off uh, about 2 mm, I usually just estimate and uh, trim it off in the dark room. So the paper is already loaded in this uh, film holder. So let's do a shoot and see how's the result. Subjects are just some fruits, some banana and some apples. So this is how it looks. And then let's see how does it look like under the dark cloth. So this is how it looks like under the ground glass. Okay. For the pretzel lens design, only the center area will be sharp. The surrounding corners will be soft. So this is how it looks under the ground glass. We will see how it looks like in the paper negative. The ISO, I set it to ISO 3 and aperture F5. So we are getting a reading of 0.8 of a second, which I take it as 1 second. So I will not use my graphics shutter. So I will use a lens cap since it's about 1 second. So as usual, 
I have my developer, which is a multi uh, Uford multi grip paper developer, water, and then my fixer. I loaded the paper into this processor. If you are watching my channel for the first time, I have a few other videos where I talk more about this processor. I will put the link on the top right hand corner. Okay. So the developer is going to go in for two minutes because this is a fiber based photo paper. So that is the usual timing we will use to process the paper. Um, then we'll follow by a water stop valve and finally the fixer. Okay, so let's pour in the developer now. I'm using my the other hand to hold the camera. So once it's in, I will start to agitate the chemicals inside by moving the tray and also start my timer. Right. So when two minutes is up, I will pour out the developer and quickly pour in the stop valve. So I will start firming again when I pour in the fixer. A few minutes later. So I pour out the developer, pour in the water bath and also I pour out the water bath after about half a minute. So now I'm ready to pour in the fixer. The fixer for paper usually like one, two minutes will be good enough. Uh, remember, you're not sure, sure about all this timing. In the paper um, package where you purchase the paper, there is always an instruction sheet on the different timing to be used for the processing. So just refer um, the, to the piece of paper if you need more information or need uh, confirmation. So I am going to pour it in for like two minutes, then we can open up the processor. Okay, so when I'm ready to open up the tray, I will show you. Okay, the fixing has been done and I also pour in the initial water bath. So now I'm ready to open up the processor. So this is a brief look. Okay, I will probably convert this into a positive uh, using software. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. So here is the photo negative and the positive that I've converted using Photoshop software. If you have any thoughts or questions, please leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Hi guys, welcome to the end of this video. Please like it, share it and then finally do subscribe to my channel. i see you in my next video. Take care and bye!